Many people express shock when, after being handed a bouquet of dahlias, they are told that all the flowers are the same species. The development of 20 different dahlia floral forms has made dahlias one of the most diverse commercial flowers available. In this video, we will discuss the botany of different dahlia blooms, as well as reviewing the genetics of flower body plant in Arabidopsis thaliana. Like sunflowers and other members of Asteraceae, a dahlia flower is actually a collection of many flowers. Each petal is an individual flower with its own stamens and carpal, although these appear to be infertile. The petal appears to develop from the corolla tube, a structure that encloses the carpels and stamens and which will be shown in more detail later. However, there are also petal-like objects that develop from other organs. For example, the yellow petals on this poo varietal are actually petaloid stamens. The stamens at the base of the petal have been induced to develop as petals. One way of showing this is by noting the absence of normal stamens, and that the petaloid stamens agree in color and number with stamens in other parts of the plant. Disc florets are enclosed in a corolla tube, which becomes petaloid in ray florets. The corolla tube encloses the anthers and stamens. Over a period of a few days, the stigma emerges from the corolla tube, picking up pollen from the anther as it emerges. Therefore, the stigma is the bilobed, pollen-coated structure, often leading people to mistake it for the anthers. The anthers remain inside the corolla tube. Here we see a disc floret at two different stages of development. On top is the immature disc floret. The mature disc floret with the emerged carpels is on the bottom. Here we see the same disc florets, but dissected so that you can see that the anthers are in fact inside the corolla tube. It is easy to see from this magnified picture that the carpel emerges from the corolla tube bearing the pollen. As we zoom in on the carpel, we can see the pollen attached to it. Here is a close-up of the pollen alone. Pompon flowers such as Crossfield Ebony have many more florets than Rio Rojo, for example, a red simple flower. There can also be a difference in the ratio of ray florets to disc florets without a change in number. Variations in this ratio can even be seen on a single plant, especially in the cactus variety. Notice here how the flower on the right has much fewer disc florets than the flower on the left. An additional cause of phenotypic variation is petal shape. Petals can be curved upwards or downwards. Curvature likely reflects differential growth rates at the edge relative to the rate of growth at the center of the petal. This topic is discussed by Cohen, 2003. Here we see three examples of petals, each with different curvature. What do you think determines whether the petal curves up or down? One of the most interesting facets of dahlias is the existence of petaloid stamens in the collaret variety. Let us now consider a classical genetics model for flowering as a way of explaining how petaloid stamens may come about. In this and many other dicot species, there are four floral organs, starting from the outside and working towards the center. Sepals, petals, stamens, and carpels. In this model, the ABC model, which flower part develops depends on the interactions between three proteins, A, B, and C. These proteins' expression is controlled by a spatial gradient that allows the flower to be divided into four concentric circles. The ring where just A is expressed equals sepals, where A and B are expressed equals petals, and where B and C are expressed equals the stamens. Finally, only C is expressed in the center of the flower, causing carpels to form. C inhibits the synthesis of A, and vice versa. To explain petaloid stamens, we can theorize that if there is a deleterious mutation in gene C, protein A would be expressed in more flower parts, such as, perhaps, the developing stamen meristem. This would lead to the stamens developing a petal phenotype while keeping their own position and coloring. Additional proteins with indirect involvement in floral part regulation, such as UFO, unusual flower parts, are still being discovered. These genes are hypothesized to function through targeted protein ubiquitination that could theoretically decrease the concentration of a key protein in a specific tissue or cell type to modify floral ontogeny. Additionally, although ray and disc florets seem to have identical ABC gene product distributions, they have clearly different phenotypes. This fact once again underscores the importance of both position and additional protein cofactors required to explain flower development. The following are some flowers that were known to have irregular development. What sort of irregularities are occurring? How would you classify them? For what reasons could a plant show such irregularities of form? What types of floral ontogeny mistakes would you predict?